it feel when you're like, oh, I really love this show, but then someone's like, oh, the book is so much better. Well, sometimes it is. Sometimes I'm that person, but I, um, yeah. Anyway, so this or this, are they backwards? I don't even know if it's going to show up right. I always see like posts, just random stuff about how book characters and movie characters are different. I really like films and movies and the artistic aspect of it all, the visual aspect of it all. It's kind of cool to get a sense of the differences between the book and the movie when we compare them together. So this is a drawing that I did last year of Tyrion Lannister, played by Peter Dinklage uh, in the HBO series. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to superimpose whatever book description I can find on top of this drawing and sort of retool it and redraw it. And it should be fun. A little, little different exercise here. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is Google what he looks like. I did read the book, but it's been a while. I know he has a little bit uglier looking face to him and everything. Okay, so Tyrion is a dwarf. A jutting forehead, uh, mix, mismatched eyes of green and black, dirty blonde hair, and his unique stare has been said to make most people uncomfortable. Okay, let's do this. Looks like there's some other inspiration here too. There's some other artist depictions of uh, this crazy dwarf. All right, I'm actually using an iPad for this, so it's gonna be super easy. I can just take a photo of my sketchbook of the older Tyrion drawing from last year and just start right into the editing program. I'm using Clip Studio Paint, which is an amazing, powerful program, and I just love it so much. Well, I love drawing traditionally even more, but if I'm gonna draw digitally, the iPad and Clip Studio combination is pretty sweet. So Tyrion has this really bad scar on his face from the Battle of the Blackwater. On this particular ink drawing, the real one in the sketchbook, I had the scar on the other side of his face, but I figured for the angle of his face that it would be kind of cooler to see the scar facing us. I'm not really sure which side it's on or even remember if it's on a particular side. I do remember from the book that uh, he had his nose quite a bit damaged from that battle too so I'm gonna make this nose quite a bit more haggard looking and kind of messed up. And in fact his whole face is gonna be a, a little rough. I took a little bit of inspiration from Google with the hair too. Instead of the uh, the film version where his hair is like falling in his face, I took uh, that kind of pulled back approach with the high widow's peak marks there. Uh, I don't really know why, but I figure it kind of has this more of a medieval lord sort of look, at least to me anyway, because that's what he is. He is a, a lord and it's medieval fantasy, but still. I don't know. He's a really cool character and uh, kind of didn't like the way it ended, but why don't you guys let me know what you thought. I know it's been a while and no one cares about Game of Thrones anymore, but I care. I care. So, doing some retooling here with the hair, I... It's a little bit more difficult with digital to try and match that traditional brush stroke, so I'm just adding in more uh, more lines, basically. More lines, the better. <laughs> it's not it's not going to be the cleanest finished drawing, but it is going to be a good representation of him. And then throw some uh, like darker, golder colors in between with the hair too, and just to not give it that really bright uh, yellow look. With the eyes, I did want to go with a really bright green. I figured, why not? The guy's already got mismatched eyes, so instead of a natural green look, why not give him this really potent 
green, I don't know, neon green look. I don't know, it's just kind of, he's going to have that penetrating stare that really, uh, that really gets to the heart of his enemies. So why not make it just jump out at you? I did throw some, uh, some lighter colors on the scar, some of these reddish colors under his eyes and the scars, just to really emphasize that that is a scar and not just another crosshatch line or anything like that. And to emphasize the brow line, I wanted to kind of have this shadow create underneath his eyes. So just kind of makes the the brow stick out a little bit further with a with a more massive shadow under there. I want to know what you guys think about this video idea too because I think it's kind of fun to play with the uh, the awesome digital tools that we have available to us these days where I can alter original drawings and change them to any other way, any different way. Because there is two different parts to this character. Um, need I hold those up again? But, I don't know, it's just exciting. And how many other movie characters have I drawn where the book character is completely different? Uh, I can't really incorporate how they act differently because, you know, in the movies sometimes they're like drastically different or combinations of two different characters or whatever. But I definitely think I'm going to be trying this video again. Um, with someone else. Let me know if you have any uh, suggestions, especially suggestions of someone that I've already drawn that you know I've already drawn. But it doesn't matter. I'm going to keep on drawing lots of people. All right, now we get to the really fun part. This is my finished version of Tyrion Lannister book version with the uh, soul-piercing green eye, scars all over his face, and... A, a different hairstyle. Uh, he's still wearing the same tunic, though. Here's also the uh, progression of layers. I think it's kind of cool, too, between the original drawing and this drawing. And that about does it for this video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope it was a blast, and we'll catch you next time. Bye.